Um, my name is Thomas Dasovac. I'm the director of the Belgrade Center for Digital Humanities. Um, and I'm involved romantically and otherwise with um, the Digital Infrastructure for uh, Arts and Humanities, or DARIA. I'm the national coordinator of DARIA Serbia, and I'm also the chair of the National Coordinators Committee of um, European DARIA. To be honest, I don't remember a particular moment. It was not a, a momentous historical occasion for me. Um, I think what happened was that um, I met people who are in one way or the other involved uh, with DARIA. And this is, this is an important point to make because the digital research infrastructure is not only about hardware and software and methods and tools, it is very much about people. It is made by people, it is made for people, for researchers. And um, I, I really would like us to remember that because um, a digital research infrastructure, especially in the humanities, or in any field really, um, could not exist without researchers themselves. And in addition to Daria, um, I will be also involved, start, or I'm already involved with a project called Alexis, European Lexicographic Infrastructure. It's a project that has recently won a Horizon 2020 grant, an infrastructure grant. Um, and uh, we are now dealing with administrative issues, signing the contract, and I think starting January 2018, for the next four years, we'll be working on building the European Lexicographic Infrastructure. I'm very excited about that project. Um, because I think it will give us a chance to do, um, simply do the kinds of things that were not possible before because lexicography was always um, a discipline bound by linguistic and national borders and, and we are trying to build a European lexicographic infrastructure which is something very, very exciting. especially in the context of, of the humanities, there is n no general agree agreement on what a research infrastructure is. Um, it differs from dis disciplinary perspectives, maybe differs from national perspectives as well, from the kind of scholarly traditions that people come from, etc. The one thing that's very interesting about infrastructures in general is that usually, you know, infrastructures as, as kind of mediating interfaces that help you move things, people, signs from A to B, etc. Usually infrastructures are successful when you don't notice that they exist. Okay, so when you get on a highway and you drive from A to B, you're not thinking I am driving along an infrastructure. It's just a road. It's part of your everyday commute, right? Mm -hmm. And Digital research infrastructures one day should uh, become so embedded in our day-to-day -day scholarly work that we won't have the need to maybe um, stress the infrastructural nature of them. They will be just there. We are not. We are certainly not there yet. This is this is kind of a utopian goal to to aspire towards. Um, but we're doing the best we can. And as I said, it's about tools, methods and people and we have to keep um, keep imagining and reimagining what it is uh, that a research infrastructure can do, help us do. And the other thing that it, that's interesting, I also uh, remember and I think some of us have this experience of using research infrastructures without being actually aware that they are research infrastructures. Mm -hmm. And one example I can think of goes back to the time when I was an undergraduate um, many, many years ago. Uh, it was in the 90s. I was studying um, first classics and then Russian literature at Harvard. And the 90s were the time when um, digital technologies were very new. Uh, but one project that has lived to this day is the Perseus Digital Library of Classical mm -hmm. Authors. And I remember, um, I mean, that was a trailblazing project then, and it is still doing important things now because they have um, things like canonical text services and they're working on citability of um, ancient authors and different versions etc so they're doing some very inter interesting technical things to this day but I just remember in the 90s when when the internet wasn't that exciting yet uh, it wasn't you know it was black and white it wasn't <laughs> there was no multimedia etc in the beginning 
discovering um, Greek and Latin authors, di discovering dictionaries, discovering links that you you know you could read a dictionary entry, click on a on a citation and go to the actual text and read it. For me, that was that was I'm, I'm a dictionary nerd, uh, uh, but that was that was very exciting, and that was. A research infrastructure before research infrastructures. So um, I, I would like us to use even this term in a in a perhaps freer way and to understand that there's a lot of um, aspects of research infrastructures that we encounter on a daily basis by going to the library, by ch you know using electronic copies of certain books, etc. That we are sometimes not even aware of. Uh, defining impact and and outreach is is difficult to, for me. It's not made easier because I'm a I'm also a lexicographer. It's made harder because I have very high um, standards for what's a good definition. So I'm not actually going to define you define those terms to you um, in a lexicographic fashion because I I don't want to do it spontaneously here. But what I can say and will say is that, um, to put it very simply, if we compare these two terms, these two words, concepts, ideas, I like outreach, I don't like impact. I have a big problem with the way impact is um, used these days uh, for the accumulation of academic capital. Uh, bibliometric methods are highly questionable when it comes to the humanities. Um, the problems, you know, are so numerous, I don't even know where to start. Uh, when you're working on a, as a scholar in a small language, you're, you know, you're a literary scholar, etc. Your community of scholars know your language and they have to read your language and, and the papers you write. If we define impact by simply bibliographic um, methods and, high, you know, so-called high impact journals, we are really privileging those who work on big languages, those who work on English, and I think that's that's a very dangerous trend for the humanities. So, um, in that sense, I'm really not not a big fan of impact. And I must say that in my career, which is which has been maybe unorthodox in certain ways. Um, I always wanted to work on things that I'm interested in, and I really didn't care so much about the kind of um, impact that I've been talking about so far. On the other hand, outreach is a wonderful thing. <laughs> outreach is about involving communities. It's about involving your fellow scholars in the kind of work that you do, but it's also about involving the community, you know, the general public at, at large. Um, and I think that, um, again, you, you asked me to talk Personally, for me personally, um, I, I really only care about this type of activity. I can give you one example. We were in Serbia, we were doing, uh, we started a platform for the transcription of handwritten documents and we transcribed or we, we um, scanned and presented one handwritten dictionary of a particular Serbian dialect and it was a very obscure work no, but that not many people knew about um, and and of course it's a scholarly topic but it's a it's a dictionary that's rich with uh, interesting words and concepts and unusual anecdotes and then we said what can we do with this other than just you know present it to scholars so we organized an exhibition uh, where we showed the the process of digitization, we showed how we started from these index cards, where you know this author wrote the definitions of these words. Um, we had um, audiovisual material with people reading uh, the uh, uh, words in this dialect or text in this dialect. We had you know fancy projections on the wall, etc., and a big table where people could actually interact with the website and and. Um, um, read the, the dictionary and it and it was it was a wonderful experience because we could see that even when you work on a on a slightly obscure topic um, the jet the interest of the public is there for things that deal with the humanities people care about language people care about history and 
you know, research infrastructures should help us do our work as researchers, but we shouldn't be afraid of, of uh, branching out and making sure that some of the results that we produce are also available to the general public. It's a very complex question, um, how research infrastructures influence um, the impact of individual researchers. And it's, it's complex and, and difficult because um, the, the whole system of how we measure impact is, uh, predates digital research infrastructures. So the impact is usually measured in, uh, on the basis of your academic publications and in these methodologies, you know, journal articles usually weigh more than monographs. And, and there's, there's a system uh, in place which is incredibly capitalistic in, in its nature that you have to deal with um, big publishers in prestigious journals, etc. Um, that system was in place uh, before players like Daria and Clarin came, came on the scene. And the, the, the existing system doesn't take into account the fact that we no longer produce only papers. Mm. Um, we produce increasingly um, digital annotated editions. We produce software. We collect data. So there's a whole range of activities that are essential to the creation of a, uh, and the main sustainability of a digital research infrastructure that are actually not that, that do not translate into, um, you know, points for promotion at a university, etc. And I think this is one of the central challenges that actually we have as humanists, as scholars these day, these days, is to um, to transform the system um, and and call me a revolutionary. Uh, but um, things will have to change. Now, I I think the role. Th Digital research infrastructures cannot do everything on their own. They cannot, you know, we are not at the barricades. We're not um, squatting the universities at this point in our um, careers. But I think the the more we develop um, digital research infrastructures and the more, the more we show what kind of research is possible using digital methods, the, the, the academic, academia at large will kind of have to adapt um, to this new um, model of scholarly production. So um, my answer is that um, I'm not sure, I mean maybe it's not the answer that you want to hear, but I'm not sure that digital research infrastructure are in a position to, to influence the impact of individual scholars as much as they should, as much as they could, but I certainly hope that that will change over time. So on the one hand, um, digital research infrastructures need to, as, as you suggested, um, listen to what people or scholars need and the scholar needs. At the same time, the, the research infrastructures have to invest in training and education um, because you cannot build a community unless you give them instruction on how to use infrastructures. So it comes from, from uh, both sides, you know, individual scholars need to be vocal about uh, what are their needs for their fields and, and research infrastructures have to respond by, by um, working on, on training and education measures and Daria does a lot in this respect. We have Daria teach and, and are trying to do more. Uh, but uh, there's, there's a great deal of, I mean, it, it has to come from both sides, definitely. I think there's a, there's a lot of um, advocacy that has to happen that, that is not um, at the level of individual scholars. You know, as individual scholars who work um, at a university and are pursuing, or an institute, research institute, pursuing their career, getting their degrees, publishing, etc. Um, they don't have time, nor is it their role to to kind of fight for for political change. And this is this is a policy or political policy level change uh, that happens in ministries of education and uh, ministries of science and 
um, different institutions, how they, they evaluate scholarship. Now, things are changing in this respect as well, and, and um, I think things are better than they used to be maybe 10 years ago, but, but I think it, it still remains um, something that, that actually the you know, people who are running digital research infrastructures will, will have to keep pursuing as a goal to explain that uh, we have different modes of production and that we need to evaluate um, um, what we produce in a different way. One model, for instance, already exists. It's a tricky one, but it exists. It's, it's called post-publication peer review. Okay, so right now you submit an article. Usually, you submit an article to to a journal. It gets peer reviewed. It gets published. That's the end of the story. A different model would be to um, write papers, deposit them in your university depository or repository or the digital research infrastructure, such as Daria, in HAL or somewhere like that, and then to create a system where after you publish a draft, people can actually comment and help you improve the article. Now, it's, it's, it's not as simple as it sounds because A, people have to find time to read <laughs> and improve, um, and some people might not be that um, easy about or feel that easy about submitting or opening up their unfinished work to the general public. So in that sense, I think there's, there's something that individual researchers can do as well, is that try to think about um, not striving just for perfection for the sake of career, but kind of st striving for more um, open and community-oriented scholarly process as such. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's where we're kind of, so on the one hand we would have advocacy and on the other hand we would have scholars who, who decide to share more of their data and unfinished work to, to slowly change the way things work. I already said that, that research infrastructures are about people, so, so um, outreach is 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 kind of in the <laughs> I think in the DNA of of a research infrastructure. And my own um, uh, journey um, over the past ten years, say, um, I can't tell you how much I have profited from being part of a community such as Daria mm -hmm. uh, myself. Um, it's it's important to first of all, it's important to get out of your your you know small local national boundaries and to be in touch with people who work in your field and to see what's the state of the art and 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 um, and on the other hand it's also it's also um, it's a it's a learning opportunity but it's also a chance for you to show that actually um, we do some good work too, even though we come from a small, under-resourced, mm -hmm. underrepresented country. So, so for me, I think um, it, has been, it has been a real pleasure to be part of the discussion, but also that, you know, I was thrilled that I had a chance to show what kind of tools and methods and scholarly work we do. Um, and to give you just one one concrete example, so we at the Belgrade Center for Digital Humanities, we have built a um, a new dictionary p platform for the Institute of Serbian Language, and we're digitizing historical dictionaries, dialect dictionaries, and and it's it's a wonderful new project. Um, we started, you know, and we went through all the stages of kind of digital humanities scholarly development. We started with a data model, we built an API on top of it, and then we built a nice website and and the data is available not only on the website but through an api and through t you know ti encoded editions of dictionaries etc etc all that i think is is um a product of my years of engagement with daria and with people in daria but the the nice part comes now that um we would like to try to to um use our platform and, and build a generic dictionary publication platform uh, that will enable other um, institutions with fewer resources to actually encode their dictionaries in TI in, a, in something that we call TI Lex, which is we're working on a particular subset of TI um, for dictionaries based on best practices. And to, so, so to develop generic tools and services for publica publishing and analyzing dictionaries. So, 
and this is this is again what um, Daria has taught me is that you know if you develop something good, you make it open. Re uh, first of all, you you create it in you know with some open license so that other people can share, and then the real joy comes from actually uh, uh, coming together with people and trying to to improve that. Um, so, as far as outreach is concerned, um, it's for me it's the opposite story of impact. I'm I'm. I'm thrilled about what I've seen so far, and I think there's so many, uh, there's many more things to to come. One of the challenges that um, digital libraries face, I think, is that they lack, usually lack, um, some kind of feedback mechanism from individual scholars. Um, you you have, let's say, you you take some some text, old Dutch manuscript from a digital library, you work on it, you prepare it at um, a digital edition, you annotate it, you put a lot of scholarly work in it, and then you publish it, and it's somewhere else, and all the information that you created, or the additional value that you created for this particular document, never makes it back to the digital library where you actually got the text from. And I think um, we will have to work on this as individual scholars, but also as digital research infrastructures and heritage institutions, to make sure that that outputs of us as individual scholars can make it back to the research infrastructure, to the digital library, to museums, etc. Because the technology is there. It's not a straightforward thing because you have to worry about versioning and all sorts of things. It's a, it's a challenge on the technological level as well because libraries like stable documents. They don't they don't you know they don't like it to change every day. Um, but I think there's a there's a lot that can be done and should be done in this um, field, which will then also help um, individual scholars have a greater outreach because they'll be able to to kind of. Um, feedback their knowledge into the infrastructure or um, the digital library much more uh, easily than they can do today. <laughs>